Okay, that should have done the trick right there. Don't let me know. Awesome. Audio loud and clear. I got it on 60 second delay, but it looks like that chat's going on fire. So we're going to wait just a couple minutes like we normally do. Let, them, let, let, let a few more people in the door. And then we're going to take off because we got things to discuss. Uh, Square Peg, I hope you in there because you got a homework assignment. You're about to see. You're about to see the real deal, girl. And I'm gonna need you to do some videos because this is what we're discussing today. This is what we're discussing today, and you guys are all gonna get a free chart, and and all the data in this entire presentation is gonna be on a PDF free Podia download. I'll have the link available for you after the show. You can download the chart and the entire video, all the data that I'm presenting right now. All of this was discovered after I did that other video because once 2020 was revealed to me, and I already had 2040, once I had the first seal and the sixth seal, everything else fell into place. And it's amazing. Guys, we were always meant to know the unveiling. It's the rest of the world that wasn't meant to know. The immortals, the elect, the called, the chosen. Listen, guys. Remember, the book of Revelation was written, To he who overcometh will I give a white stone and a new name. It's not talking to anybody else. It's not talking to anybody who loves the construct, who belongs in the construct, who chooses to stay here through each reset. It's not talking to them. The book of Revelation is addressed to those, to those who overcometh, to those who have awakened. And this is what we're going to get into because the seven seals are a lot more than just some imagery and a chronological narrative for people to wake up and see these signs. It's a lot more than that. And we're going to get into that because the seven seals were addressed to certain individuals and the seven seals were broken by an individual that no one else could, could do but this individual. And this is introduced in Revelation. And most of the discussions about the seven seals totally ignore this factor. We have to get into the tetramorph. I've talked about the tetramorph multiple times in past presentations over the last three years. And it's very mysterious. But you're going to see here that the tetramorph was known in ancient times. They built a gigantic statue. It is the largest statue from the ancient world. It's the largest statue in the world. It's 240 feet long and 66 feet high. It's in Egypt right now. It is a stone symbol of the ancient tetramorph. And it's the tetramorph that explains the seven seals to us. It's, it's, it's very... It's very intriguing, guys. But before I go go get into this explosive content, I just want to make allow a few more people in the door. Like I said, at the end of this video, you got to give me about five minutes because it takes about five minutes for me to upload this to Podia. But this whole chart and all these pages of data we're going into today about the seals, every bit of this right here will be available to you for free. On, I'm not charging for this. This is free on Podia. It's a Podia download. And for those of you new to my channel, I've got a lot of stuff free, free on Podia. And I got a lot of other things that are just $2, $5, $6. They're worth it. But I got a lot of free stuff too. So yeah, we are definitely going to get into this. Six minutes in, and we got over a thousand people in. That's pretty good. It doesn't hurt my feelings a bit. But I do have time to give some appreciation before I start this dissertation. So thank you, moderators. I see you guys in there. JJ Recon, Phoenix Protocol, Wendy Flores, all the faithful ones. I removed three moder moderators today because I haven't seen them in the chat in months. So that's not that's not, I mean, they're they're welcome back, but there's no reason to keep them if you're not if you're not gonna participate. So I don't care about you missing two, three, four, five, even a month, month. But, you know, if you're gone for three or four months, there's no reason for you to be a, to be a moderator. Jahara Lee, Don Hart's in the house. I see her right there again. Uh, Rough Round Edge. That's a new name to me. 
JJ Recon, Melody. Thank you guys for 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 uh, participating. Jamie Robbins. Oh, uh, Jamie Robbins. You know what? I do not know why this hasn't happened a long time ago, man. But uh, you just got added as a moderator just now. Jamie Robbins, go ahead and make a comment. You see your little old moderator badge. I'm sorry. This should have been done a long time ago. Corey Stern, too. I can't tell because I'm looking at a $49 uh, donation, so I can't tell if you're a moderator or not, but I don't see a blue wrench. Corey, we've already done videos together. You know what? Oh, you just got added as a moderator, just like that. There, I've replaced two of the three, just like that. That's good. Oh, there, there are many of you deserving. Don't think that I haven't called out called you out. It's because you're not deserving. No. I'm uh it's just not on my mind most of the time. Man, Merrill GG, we got business. I gotta send you something that was promised. Thank you, Merrill, for being here. Check your blue wrench. You just got added as a moderator. Merrill and I have met. We've had we've had uh, breakfast together, broke bread, talked business. Beer and Brashears time. That's right. 1166, 1188. All right, we're rising. I'm going to wait till the 10 minute mark, no matter how many people we got in here, and I'm going to take off, guys. And for your viewing pleasure, because I know some of you guys want to screenshot it, you're going to get this chart in PDF form, high resolution at the end of this video. I'm going to show it to you one more time. I don't hope I can get that in the picture. Maybe I need to back it up. This is what we're discussing, guys. A lot, most of the data is is, is in the sheets of paper that I, that I have as a presentation. The chart just simplifies things. It's profound. The chronology of the last days was never intended to be complicated. It was never intended to be complicated. There's a lot of there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people, man, you got to understand, all throughout all throughout the eschatological references throughout the Old and New Testament, we are told about the last days, not the last years. We are told over and over and over to pay attention to the days. It also says no one knows the day nor the hour, but nowhere in the entire body of Scripture does it say that we will not know the year. As a matter of fact, it would be absolutely ridiculous for the Old Testament to provide so much chronographical material and trying to figure out when different different events happen in, in, uh, in accordance with other events, because the Old Testament is real big on dating things at, at the number of years between events. It never uses a standard calendar. But there is no way that these, these mathematical constructs that are found in the Old Testament would have value if they didn't have predictive value. And they do. I've shown you guys on my own channel many, many times. One of the greatest chronographical, chronographical mysteries of the entire Old Testament is the 1,656 years of the pre-flood world. It is the key to decoding the entire calendar. Mark Hanks veterans, you already know what I'm talking about. The number 138, the Phoenix periodicity. So we're going to get into this. That first video, here's a, for the chain of custody, for those of you who haven't been following, it's very simple. It's very simple. I was doing a video on the book of Job only because Dawn asked me to. She mentioned the book of Job, how enigmatic it was. It was one of her favorite books. We left it alone. Two or three days later, she mentioned it again. I just kind of let it go. Uh, a little while later after that, she mentioned it again. So I said, are you, are you, do you want me to do like a presentation on the book of Job? Oh, that's a good idea. Would you? I said, that's how that went down. So I, uh, I really do like the book of Job. And I also knew that it had some really profound material. So I spent a night just going through it, fine tooth comb, read the entire book of Job, took notes, and I did that presentation on the book of Job. But in the middle of doing the construction for the presentation, 
I had reread a passage in Job that just kept haunting me. And I've already told you guys, this, this is what led to the first video about the first seal. It is what opened my mind up to the whole first seal. My, my Judeo-Christian programming from being a Southern Baptist good old boy for four, first 40 years of my life had me believing in something that wasn't there. The first seal, the white horseman, he cut. You know what? I had been trained to believe a lie. Once I had divorced myself from that programming, that's how you guys got that first video on the first seal. And I'm telling you now, we're going to do some more deprogramming and decoding in this video. And I apologize for those of you who, who don't have the tenacity to endure these longer videos. This one might go over two hours. There's no doubt. So thank you guys for all. Uh, thank you guys for sharing your Friday night with me. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait till Saturday. I didn't want to step on square peg or somebody else's toes. I just go ahead and get it done on Friday. Uh, I would do have an announcement. Nick T. I was going through my messages. Nick T. Has completely finished Chronicon. It goes up to 2012. For those of you who don't know, Nick T has his own channel. It's featured on my channel. There are three channels featured on my channel. Nick T and Square Peg are two of those channels. Um, Nick T read Chronicon starts at 5239 BC, and it goes through 41 ancient and modern calendars and all the events that I've recorded in 20 years of, of data mining. It goes all the way up to 2012. It's fascinating read of the history of the world. You will never see the history of the world the same again once you go through Chronicon. So Nick T saves you the trouble. I think it's 283 videos or something. It's something like that. 278 videos. He's done. 293 videos, something like that. But he's done uh, reading the Chronicon. You want to go to Nick T's channel. And whatever you're doing, if you're working, if you're a trucker, if you if you're just cleaning house, you know, two or three times a week, you want to you want to go through the history of the world. It's fascinating. Chronicon was my life's research before I got out of prison. And uh, now Nick T has read the entire book spread through just just a little bit less than 300 episodes. His episodes are like six to nine minutes each. Yeah, it's 510 pages, but it's packed with information. That was, some hell of, that was some hell of a de dedication. I'm probably going to feature a page for Nick T on my on my website. The website's been revamped. All the links have been checked. Everything's good. We even got touch. Uh, even the individual images are are, are links. It, yeah, the website's been uh, uh, everything's all with all our emails for Archaics Help, Archaics Orders, uh, Archaics Podcasts. Uh, all the emails are on the channel now. Chronicon's easy to find on the channel. All my published books, my unpublished books are all easy to find. All the free materials for Archaics are all easy to find. Go to resources. Just go to resources uh, on the in the archaics.com website and you'll see it. All the links, all, I mean, all the uh, the pages have been redesigned. It's all uh, just done that. Oh, Perceiver, how you doing? Joel, we just did a video together recently. You guys know Joel. All right. Thank you, Wendy Flores. Hey, man, what does that mean? Why would you spell errant with an A? Why would you do that? Mandela Mile, Jason, that was errant. The original word for you, not errant. Why would you spell the word, spell that that way? It's not spelled with an A. All right. Oh, Martin's in the chat somewhere. I see somebody talking to him. All right. One last look before we get started. One last look. And we're going to get through this. This is for all the new people. About 400 new people just showed up last five minutes. So we're about to go through this chart. At the end of this video, Give me about five, six minutes to upload it to Podia, and you can have this chart for free as a PDF download with all the data that I'm presenting. Chart attached to a whole packet. It's all in one PDF. We want to get through this.
Right. So 2020. Yeah, I'm thoroughly convinced now. Even even apart from that, even apart from the data that was presented in the first video, I'm thoroughly convinced that 2020 was the breaking of the first seal. And we all felt it. We all felt change in 2020. Everybody remembers where you were when when in January, when all these news items were just hitting back to back to back to back to back. The the w, I mean, all these different World Health Organizations and all these different countries were locking down all of a sudden. And we were hearing about flights being canceled and we we're hearing about different cities going into quarantine and all this news is coming from China. All this, we all knew where we were. Everybody knows in 2020, you felt it. We just didn't know because the greatest mysteries are always deciphered in retrospect. We didn't know what was going on at the time. Because we are bewitched, it's called the media. Media was the name of an ancient sorceress. This is what happened to them. They, they control information and they controlled our perception of reality. In, in 2020, they, I mean, even the Judeo-Christian programming has controlled us to the point our, our filters are, are so set by our beliefs that we totally missed what was going on around us. The first horseman was Apollyon. Apollyon who brought, who basically brought in the, uh, the pharmacia. So this was the first move and it's all ritual. And that's what we're going to get into here because this is some amazing stuff. But before we get into the chart, Let's get into the beginning of the seven seals. Let me read this to you because it's relevant. Even before the first seal is broken, we got to we got to understand what's transpiring here. We can't just start at the at the first seal. We have to decipher what's going on because the breaking of the seals isn't what you think it is. It's very very intriguing. Okay. Revelations chapter 5 is where it starts. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. A book is a container of knowledge. It can also mean a scroll. It doesn't matter. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. This is very telling, guys. It means that some, some power outside the construct had determined that it was time. Not the elite. Not, not the bastards that rule over us. They were caught flat-footed too. Now, I believe the seals are divine revelations from the oversoul. Now, we can, lab we can label it whatever we want. God, Allah, uh, the Lamb, uh, Almighty, whatever. It's, just, it's the oversoul to me. So these revelations are meant for those who are to receive an inheritance. Remember, the address to, to the, the book of Revelation is addressed to he who overcometh and to he who overcometh. This is said multiple times and the promises are given. But, but the ones who are to overcometh are going to go through something. The very fact that this book is, such, is so absolute infers to me that you and I have been living through life sims to get to this point. We have been living through multiple life sims to get to this point because we're all here at the same time now going through this. And this is what is inferred. This is something that all men, all nations, all languages, all kingdoms, all time periods, all tongues will go through. And the only way that can be possible is if all of us experiencing this together we've all lived multiple life films where we've experienced other times and other lives together as well and now we're going through a very final purge this is what it is this is what it's about the book of revelation is to he who overcometh now the seals are only to those who are listening 
Remember, okay, it says over and over, come and see and listen. These are these are things that are uh, are said over and over in the New Testament and in the book of Revelation. So we've already gone through the first seal and done the decode. It says, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. All right. The second beast. Now, now we have to introduce the tetramorph. I know a lot of you don't know what I'm talking about, but in, in the book of Ezekiel, which is highly prophetic, almost all of its prophecy, in the book of Ezekiel, we are introduced with the throne of God. And the throne of God happens to be a uh, zoan, zoan in Greek. It is a living being in the voice of God. God comes out from the center of it, but it's got the, the head and face of a lion. It's got the body of a bull. It's got the face of a man, and it's got wings as of an eagle or, sphinx, or, 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 a, or a phoenix. In ancient Assyria, this, this divine being, the tetramorph, was known uh, by the Turib, Tarib, Oh, I'm sorry, carib, like caribou, like the animal caribou. It was called the carib in ancient in ancient uh, Akkad, and it looks just like a sphinx. It's got a bull's body, the front paws and mane of a lion, a man's face, sometimes bearded, and it's got eagle's wings painted on the side. This is this is the Akkadian, Near Eastern, Sumerian, Babylonian version of this same tetramorph, this being for which the more ancient sphinx is the prototype, the sphinx that guards the Great Pyramid. I know a lot of you new to my channel don't know anything about the Great Pyramid. You've been miseducated. You have no idea. My archaics veterans understand the Great Pyramid is an enigma, and you would have to get through my Lost Secrets of Giza, my Great Pyramid videos to truly understand what this monument is. It was anciently called the altar of God, and that's what's in the seven seals. One of the seven seals concerns the altar of God. The tetramorph is the ancient riddler. It's the sphinx in Greek. The tetramorph, tetra, is based off the number four in Greek, and which is really interesting is all through the seven seals, there may be seven seals, but everything is patterned in fours. In this passage, so there are four beasts, four horsemen, four corners of the world that the tetramorph affects. There are four colors that must be adhered to here. These four colors help us decode what is exa what exactly is going on. So, basically, when I say tetramorph, you can imagine that you are an immortal being, being initiated into the family of God and to go through your initiated to he who overcometh, to go through that initiation, you are standing on the sands of a desert before the great sphinx. You're not allowed to approach that altar of God. Remember, every soul is a stone incorporated into the monument of man. When the monument of man is complete, then the chief cornerstone can descend and complete and complete the entire process. This is the what initiates the exodus from the construct. Everybody else is recycled back into the programming and every bit of it goes right back to Genesis and they all start living life sins all again until they can get to Revelation to the reset period. We're living in a construct. That construct is for the edification of the immortals within. And if they're not going to, if they're not going to get it, if they're he who overcometh, if that's not going to be one of them, then that's okay. They will get recycled back. They're, hell is not a destination. Hell is an experience. So this is where we're going with this, guys. That's right, Rayad Ali. You're living stones built up a spiritual house who believe and rely on the chief lapis angularis, 100%. This is what's hinted all through the hermetic literature. There's fragments in the, in the Old Testament. There's a lot of fragments of this, of this esoterica in, in the Christian writings. But in the Christian apocryphal writings, it's everywhere. You must read the shepherd of Hermas. 
the shepherd of harness. They're they're building the word. The word comes down and instructs and, and chooses which stones are worthy and puts them in the monument. These are souls in this great monument is being built in the shepherd of Hermas. It is, it is the great pyramid. And just like the French mathematicians of Napoleon found out in Napoleon's days, they measured the great pyramid after, after looking at the four casing blocks that are in situ there and they discovered that 144,000 of those 20 ton limestone casing blocks would have fit perfectly on the great pyramid they're not there they've been removed but that same 144,000 stones are the cover they're the last stones that go on when all the souls of men have been made complete. When the monument is done but naked, it needs to be clothed. And that mantle is 144,000 final souls that are added during the worst of the tribulation period. They're added and then the monument is made complete right before the descent of the chief cornerstone the pyramidion at the top called the Ben Ben stone of ancient Israel that was housed in the mansion of the Phoenix in, in Heliopolis. So now we move on. <clears throat> All right. So let's move on. Hey, Oh, uh, you got any trolls from J Dreamers deals? Just get rid of them. Just get rid of them. We have all the screenshots and all the posts, the man attacking me and all that. You know what? I, he's he's just trying to get a bunch of views, steadily, steadily trying to uh twist the dagger. Dude, dude's deceitful, and I'm not trying to hear it. I got no, I got nothing. Hey, do me a favor. All these trolls asking about J Dreamers, get rid of them. Yeah, I, I don't entertain that stuff. That's done. You guys know archaics, I got zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. I don't care. It's uh the man the man has proven to be a real shark and I'm done with him. I'm done with it. All right. So is my audio better if I get away from this microphone a little bit? Yeah, life's too short. Life's too short for BS, man. People put things on their channels, but but outside of uh outside of that, they post things they don't want anybody else to know. It's crazy. We got some terrible screenshots from his posts about you guys. Not about me, about you guys. Talking bad about people who who uh listen to archaics. It's ridiculous. Yeah, man. Then putting out videos trying to make me look like I'm a demon. That's crazy. That's all right. Every single channel, every individual, every personality that has attacked me since I've been on this journey has lost a lot of face, lost a lot of subs. Some channels have collapsed. Many of them don't even talk about me anymore because they lost about 50% about of their, their listeners. I'm not worried about it. I'm a man on a mission. I'm on a very strong trajectory, and nothing is going to stop me from getting the message out. Nothing. I'm not worried about any – hell, I'm trying to I'm trying to get people like, like Billy Carson and – uh. Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson to step up to the plate. I'm not worried about these peons. So, uh, we need to focus on the tetramorph. The tetramorph is very important symbol here because it is a symbol that embodies the concept of the calendar. The four royal stars that separate the heavens. The tetramorph identifies calendrical systems. So this is what we need. You guys all know the lion is Leo. The bull calf body is Taurus. The eagle's wings, you already know. Scorpio. Only in recent antiquity was it changed to a scorpion. It was originally, it was originally a wing, a winged like bird now some people believe that it wasn't even an eagle it was just an eagle for a short period of time but originally it was either a dragon or a phoenix and there's not much difference between a dragon and phoenix so it's a yeah and then the water bearer face of the man so 
the tetramorph is is drawing our attention to the calendar. So this is what we have to keep in consider consideration here. We already know that the first horseman was Apollo Pharmacaea. We know that the color was white. We know that in 2020, the entire world woke up. We have to, we have to keep that same precedent. What I mean is, is we can't go to, we can't isolate individual incidents and say, well, that must be the second seal. If the first seal was the pharmaceutical company's attack on the human race, then the second seal would have to be equally noticeable as well. It's not going to be an isolated little battle over here or a war. This, this whole pantomime between Russia and Ukraine is nothing. Because if it was something, then there would have been an all-out war. NATO and nations, EU, everybody would have been involved, but nobody involved themselves. They only sent money. They only sent some small arms. They only sent some rocket launchers. Nobody involved themselves against Russia. So that's not the second seal. That's distraction. The second seal is going to, is going to be something very noticeable. The tetramorph identifies the four quadrants of heaven. The tetramorph is told that to reveal these things about the seven seals to the four corners of the world. This is what his tetramorph is told in Revelation. And like I said, it, the tetramorph is four beasts. There are seven seals, but there's only four horsemen. Then we have uh, oh, those four horsemen are represented in four colors. And I'm pretty sure there's, uh, there's others, but this is not to be a conclusive study. This is to open up your eyes. I know many of you out there like Riyad. I know Riyad's going to do it. And I know Square Peg's going to do it. I know, I know Phoenix Protocol is going to do it. I know that there's some of you out there who just need just enough to take off. That's what this video is about. I'm going to give you plenty to take off. This video is about you doing your own research and finding things that I can't because I'm going in so many different directions. But I'm telling you now, this chart, it's very noticeable. It is very noticeable that the number four is key. Not only key, but the isometric counterparts across to the other side, the other side of this isometric pyramid, every bit of it is fulfilled isometrically, and I'm about to show these. Four years after 2020, of course, is 2024. Second seal didn't happen in 2021. It didn't happen in 2022. It's not happening in 2023. The second seal is slated to happen in 2024. The seals are not meant to be enigmatic to the seeker. The seals are not, are, are not to be mysterious or hidden to he who overcometh. Everything, everything laid out in Revelation is in its most simplistic format. It is our programming we have to divorce ourselves from because our programming has told us things that, that those, they've given us ideas attached to these symbols that don't have those meanings. Remember, we decoded the first seal using the Greek mythology because the book of Revelation is written in Greek, and, and, we, and this is what we deferred to, and it opened everything else for us. Four years after 2020 is 2024. Isometrically going across, now you know 2024 is the U.S. presidential elections, and you know the U.S. presidential elections affects the entire world because of the foreign policy of the United States, what presidents do, it affects the entire world. 2024 is the next presidential election, isometrically connected perfectly to 2016. Four years after 2020 is 2024. Four years after, I mean, four years before 2020 was 2016, when there was a huge pattern break. It was a huge pattern break, but that pattern break, that pattern break totally shocked Hillary Clinton a member of the deep state who just thought who just thought her little voting machines were going to get her right on in and Donald Trump won instead Donald Trump is not Apollo like some of you have been trying trying to associate him to he is not Apollo but he's the prophetic foreshadowing of Apollo and Apollyon he is playing a ritual role 
what he does is patterning for, for someone else in the future who will fulfill the very things that Donald Trump put into motion. This is why his identity has been so confusing to people. What he is, what he is doing is real, but none of it will be fulfilled in his lifetime. Donald Trump doesn't have much time left. Now, let's look at all. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go into a lot more detail here in a minute, but I want you. All, I need to. Sh we have to go into Nostradamus quatrains. We got. We got a lot of ground to cover, so I need to get through this chart as fast as possible. The second seal is the second. Is also the second horseman. The lion was the one that announced the white horseman, but it's the bull that announces the second horseman. The bull face on the tetramark. On the, I mean, um, excuse me, the tetramorph. The color is red. It says peace is taken from the earth. But we need to go into more detail, guys, because what we've been told about the second seal, it doesn't comport with what I found. So let's read it. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. This is an invitation to immortals. This is an invitation to those who are trying to overcome and trying to break free or die trying, trying to get out of this construct. Come and see is an invitation by a divine being to you personally to look into these matters because you're worth it. This is the message of the seven seals. Remember, this book contains amazing things, but it can't be opened. It cannot be opened until all seven seals have been broken. This is the second seal. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. This is a mistranslation, my friends. I, I looked into the Greek interlinear, and I was shocked by, how, by, by the vast departure in English that it is from the Greek. Because I'm going to tell you, the, word, the color red is actually fiery yellow orange it's not it's a very unique greek word pura puria i can't it's like, it's like it's the same as deucalion's wife new wine sailor that word is is not indicative of red like blood it's indicative of flickering yellow like fires and that's a key it's a it's a very strong clue as to what this horseman is about now we have been conditioned to believe that it's the, the red horse of war. No, it's not. I'm, I'm going to show you. This is. Power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. There's only one culture in the world that in, in all its greetings, in, in all its colloquials when you know when, when they when you meet people and, or when you depart people may peace be upon you i mean may, may you know may his peace be upon you i'm going to get into that in a minute this is a very definitive and pointed statement this isn't war this is something more sinister this is something that results in long-term planning i hope funky preppers listening to this because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. This is highly strategic. I'm going to get into it in a minute. That peace be taken from the earth, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. That too is a mistranslation. That he was not given a great sword. The word great isn't even there. In Greek, it's dagger or small knife. This is very, very... If you were to read this in Greek and understand the history of Islam, you would immediately go to the cult of the assassins in this, in this deal. This 
text is describing a single event that erupts worldwide at multiple locations. The knife is the symbol of small weapons. This is not battle in the conventional sense. This is some fifth column stuff. This is very, very specific language being used here. This, to me, I see an eruption of basically jihadic activity going on through all Western nations at the exact same time, as if there's a cue. I see it in the, this, this verse tells me in the UK, I'm gonna tell you why it tells me that, because we're gonna get into Nostradamus's quatrains and see what he says for these exact same years. We're gonna do that in this video. We're also gonna look at this isometrically to see if the isometric patterns, the holographic reflections for these years actually show what I'm talking about. This is the second horseman. Wars and battles happen every year in human history. And they're not, they're not the subject matter of seals. This is something else. This is something, remember, it's supposed to be a sign for the immortals to wake up. If you're to he who overcometh, I will give you a white stone and a new name. I will give you a white robe. This is all symbols. The white robe is a new avatar. A new name is a new eternal identity. It is a badge of honor. You made it through the nemesis simulation. It's like, it's like a patch. I'm, I will give you a white stone. You've got to have that white stone because if your stone is not in the architecture of God and the monument of man for which the Great Pyramid is a, is, a, is a terrestrial emblem of, then you're not going to make the exodus because the pyramid doesn't contain a portal. It is the portal. Well, let's move on. I need some more coffee. All right. I'm sorry, guys. I don't. I can't watch the chat. I see people are donating and all that, and I really do appreciate it. I do. I thank you. I just. I'm not trying to be insensitive or anything. I just. I'm on a mission. So, uh, we need to get get back into this deal. So, with that in mind, that in mind, it is a it is a very significant piece of Islamic history called the. It's the cult of the assassins. Listen, they were square business, real square business. Men who had ticked off the assassins would wake up with a dagger laying on their pillow, which told the, the caliph who pissed them off, damn, somebody snuck into their bedchamber, in their castle, in their citadel, snuck into their, into their city just to deliver that warning. The dagger was the only warning that a ruler got that they had just offended the assassins. They would wake up. There's a lot of stories, man. And the assassins, they weren't playing. They took people out. So anyway, this is what we have here. We have a duplication of history where it's, it's decidedly, this is, there's, this is th these seals, these seals are basically revealing a massive worldwide Muslim Christian conflict. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to get that out right now. Yeah, take peace from the earth is way more specific than war. All right, so I want to go to this second seal right here. Second seal. It's four years after 2020. So I do I do want to say something isometrically real quick. I, I need to I need to clarify something. Listen, it's not only human events that the isometric patterning follows. This is a this is like a holographic palindrome. My archaics veterans don't need any explanations, but for those new for those new to my channel, significant events in history are like a drop of water, and they pulls out in rings. Those rings are basically event 
trajectories and they're equally distant from the center as they go out, as they go further and further out each wave ring represents a year and there are events in those years that mirror holographically events in the corresponding wave ring the, this phenomenon even holds true for solar eclipses. Lunar eclipses happen all the time. The shadow of the moon on the earth, is called, it's called a, a lunar eclipse. But solar eclipses do not happen all the time. They're actually rare. But isometrically, look, look at these two black circles right here. Right here, these two black circles. This is the eclipse of 2015 and the eclipse of 2023. This year, I got it. You'll, you'll have to read it in the paperwork, but these are the only two solar eclipses anytime right anytime right now. Solar eclipses, and they just happen to be in these two years, and they're perfectly isometrically apart. You see them on the chart right there. The two black, the two black deals. So even e even eclipses follow this palindromic structuring, and I've showed that before when I did Trump's life on a chart. I showed you there was the eclipse of 2017 matched the eclipse of 1979. They were perfectly isometrically apart, just like these eclipses right here. So we're given we are given evidence here that this holographic palindromic patterning goes through everything, not just human inspired events, not just divine events, but even events in the construct itself that are a part of the mathematical construct. It all follows this. Let's see. Four years. We're going to go four years later. We're going to stick to the calendrical patterning of the tetramorph itself. And the theme of the seven seals is that we have this patterning of four. It's four of everything, four of all these things. So we're going to four more years into the future. We get to the third seal, the third seal being 2028. Oh, oh guys, we're going to get into the calendrics. The calendrics are astonishing. I'm just getting all on this chart. The third seal. Let's go ahead and read the third seal before I show you what happened isometrically. It's going to blow your mind. 2028. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld in lo a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. All right, guys. Now, don't panic. Remember, these are signs to be seen. The next verse says that this only affects 25% of the world's population. That means 75% of the world is not experiencing this. But what is experienced by this 25% will be so noticeable to the rest of the world that it will shock them into paying attention. Like, damn, because that's super high inflation. And what's revealed in that statement in the Greek is that a man will be able to work all day and make enough food just to live, but he will not be able to make enough to provide for someone else. That's how bad it's going to be in that quarter of the world, 25% of the world. Now, see that thou hurt not the oil and the wine. It looks like those with money are going to do just fine. It looks, I'm not even talking about the rich and the, well, and the wealthy, because remember, this, it's very specific. This happens to 25%, a quarter of the world. So, but it will be an event that is, that is going to wake everyone up, just like the single day when it looks like Islamic violence in all these countries, the UK, France, Germany, everywhere where you guys already know. I don't have to tell you what George Soros has been funding all this time for the past, you know, 15, 20 years. Oh, yeah. Fifth columns are in all these Western nations. Every Western nation has a huge population uh, of basically Islamic people now, Muslims. And, and it's by design. Every bit of this is by design. And this there are they don't I guess, you know, to me, I feel that. It's pure opinion, but I feel that until 2020, even the elite, they only had, a, had an idea that things were about to go. I don't believe there is in the know as, as you think. I believe that 
the elite are so spiritually vacuous, and yet they understand that there are people in this world that can educate them, so they leave them alone. Yeah, I believe that. I believe well, the more the more I continue in my in my in my basically in my effort to educate people, the more I see that I'm not just educating those who need to know. It's a double-edged sword. It's a there's there's I can't explain it any other way. I mean, it's a it's almost as if as if in in order in order to bring light to those who need to see the light, the dark the darkness gets a glimpse as well. So, you know what? I got I to take what I get. So, this is out the way. All right. So, 2028, third seal. Well, what's, what's being described here is an immense divide between the rich and the poor. In 25% of the world, the world's population. That's that's what's being described here. Now, you want to see the isometrics? This is where it gets really weird. The third seal of 2028. 2028 Anno Domini is holographically is the holographic reflection of 2012. So look at the chart. Everything on this side leading up to 2020 is ritual, patterning, and imagined events. None of this stuff is really tangible and real. Ritual, guys. In 2012, we had the Benghazi attacks in Egypt. U.S. citizens lost their lives. U.S. military lost their lives. Uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton didn't give a damn. That was in 2012. In 2012, we had a very unusual ritual unfold. That ritual included the breaking of the first seal, the emergence of Apollo and Pharmakia, the whole 2020 narrative, everything was in was in the Olympics. Children in cages and hospital beds with IV drips in the middle of a ceremony for the Olympics, the opening cer ceremony for the London Olymp Olympics. They they inadvertently made millions of people participate. Whatever you observe, you participate in, whether you want to or not. That's what they did. That's why they choose these NFL, NFL halftime shows to do these, these, these rituals. These aren't concerts. The Olympics is the same way. In the, Olymp in the opening ceremony, they showed the first seal. But in the closing ceremony, they showed the sixth seal, the phoenix. Anybody can watch those Olymp the, the London Olympics 2012. They patterned all of this. 2012 is isometrically isometrically connected to the third seal. Also, everything that was going on in the collective mindset in 2012 has to be taken into consideration. What was the greatest thing on people's minds in 2012? For a lot of people, probably about a quarter of the world's population, the movie 2012 brought to mind the end of the world, an expectation that, that the Mayan long count had ended. Oh my God, it's going to be the end of the world. The Mayan long count, serious, right? For those of you who don't know, I had books published before 2012 by Book Tree Press in San Diego explaining that the mathematics of the Mayan long count does not end in 2012. It ends in 2046. And uh, those books are full of calendrics that explain a lot of these things about the seals and the trumpet judgments and the mysterious seven thunders as well. A lot of the apocalyptic material are things I covered in my published books 20 years ago. So uh, 2012, in 2012, the collective mindset was participating in a massive ritual that involved the dying off of a lot of people, the end of infrastructure and all, and they did it in 2012 and the theaters were packed and those who watched the movie were participating as observers in the ritual. 
rituals are not done in private, my friends. All throughout ancient times, all the way up to modern, all throughout the Rosicrucian, the, medi the medieval times, all throughout the Masonic lodges, everything. Ritual is always done before witnesses. It is the observers that empower a phenomenon. This is what happened in 2012. This is the danger. This is why Hollywood is nothing but spellcraft. 2012, end of the world, all this was programmed in. Now, four years later, we get to the fourth horseman, the fourth seal. Let's read and said what it's, let's read and see what it says before we get into our, our quatrains and Nostradamus. And when I looked, he opened the fourth seal. I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse in his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. First of all, in the chain of events, we have a continuum expressed between the fourth seal, the third, yeah, the, the uh, third seal and the fourth seal. There's a continuum, meaning the events of the third seal are still playing out as the fourth seal comes into effect. There is an ongoing conflict between Christian nations and Islamic nations. It is stretched out. It is not all-out warfare. This seems to be hundreds of isolated incidents going off everywhere. Total instabilities. But we have, again, we are confronted with mistranslations in the text. The Greek interlinear that I read today conveyed a few things. I want to thank you guys for your emails. A lot of you sent me emails. I haven't been able, I got a lot of emails about the seals and, and, and different people. I, I even got a guy who is who who reads and studies, can translate Greek. He's been sending me things and I read it and was fascinating. I just don't, I, maybe I'm going to have time to put it all together in a, in a better presentation. I just wanted to get this out first. So you guys who do your own research, you have something to build off of now. So, let's see. Okay, when he had opened the fourth seal, I had, let's see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. Okay, first of all, it's not pale. The word is chorus in Greek. This word is a, it's not dark green, it's not really light green, but it's green. It's green. About 400 years ago, somebody started putting, somebody started putting uh, uh, the word pale in the translations. And then other Bible translators just started going with it instead of going with the Greek. This is a green horse. Remember, the colors identify the participants. This is a green horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over a fourth of the earth. 25% of the world's population. It doesn't say 25% of the world's population is going to die. This isn't the great tribulation, guys. This is the breaking of the seals. There's a big difference. 75% of the world will be unaffected, but 25% of the world are going to suffer things like death. That doesn't mean they're all going to die. Some of them are going to be diseased, but they're going to live. Some of them are going to suffer famine, but they're not going to die. And some of them will be killed with the beasts of the earth. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe some new technology rolls out. It drives animals crazy. I don't know. Maybe your own pets will attack you. I don't know. But there's no inference here that one-fourth of the world's population will die. The inference is, is that a quarter of the world's population will suffer one of these four things. So I just wanted to clarify that. When you read a Greek interlinear, it's still in English, 
but it puts it in the syntax of the Greeks, which gives you more, more of an idea. Because when the translators put it into more proper English syntax, some of the Greek loses its meaning. It loses its, it's, uh, it's very interesting, guys. But this is not, this is not near as bad as you think it is. However, the, the inclusion of death and hell is very interesting here. And it's very interesting because these things are being told to he who overcometh. Will I give a white robe? He who overcometh. Will I give him a white stone? Yeah, man. You have to understand it. You have to put it in context. The seven seals are signs for people. Hey, man, listen, I don't care how you've been living your life, but you better wake up. And when you start seeing these things, you know, you know, the time is short. And the reason I'm saying this, the reason this is the interpretation is because the following seal is about what happens to people after they die. The next seal does not unfold on earth. The fourth horseman is the last. The tetramorph is now done. These are events that unfold on earth, but hell and death have basically introduced a new phenomenon. When you die at, from the fourth seal afterwards, when you die, it has consequence. There's no more being born back into the construct to get another chance at a life sim. That's over with. We know, we know because the fifth seal deals with the spirits of the dead, the holy, the elect, the chosen, the redeemed, the awakened, the immortals, to, to those who overcometh. After the fourth seal, those who die are now being quarantined away from those who are still living in the world. This is why the fourth horseman focuses on hell and death, because the wicked, when they die during all these things, they too are being quarantined. They're not coming back. They're being quarantined away. Now there's a winnowing in the harvest period. Yeah, it's a thinning out of the population. People aren't coming back. I don't know what's going on. Something, something's happening, but there's no souls being born back in. This is, it's, this is done. Remember, there are enigmatic passages and revelations. I've discussed these before. To, you know, uh, to him that be wicked, be wicked still. Uh, there, there are inferences that, hey, man, once we get to a certain point in the book of Revelation, there's no more deciding yea or nay. Your decision was already made. And it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cryptic. But this is the fourth seal. The fourth seal... The fourth seal is 2032, and it continues this violence of the second seal. It continues this corruption introduced into the human genome in the first seal with Apollo Pharmacia. It continues the third seal of economic strangulation over a quarter of the world. It continues all this, the fourth seal, and sums it up. But the isometrics to the fourth seal is interesting because 2032 is isometrically connected to 2008. The fourth seal concerns souls. It concerns this basically something, something pretty harrowing, a, a finality. In 2032, There was a huge pattern break in the United States over the presidency. President Hussein Obama became the president of the United States. Shocked a lot of people. Never would have imagined that would have happened. And a lot of the people who were shocked later happened to be the black community. Because Hussein Obama did absolutely nothing for them the eight years he was president. He ended up being a very terrible president when it came to policy. The promises he made were broken. He is like the antithesis of Trump, who was a president of peace, who stopped all the war, started all these peace agreements, which is by design. It does not make Trump good. 
it means that he's the prophetic foreshadowing of Apollyon, who is going to appear in our world as something that he really isn't. He's a demon. Now, we have, we have 2008. The whole world's paying attention. We got a whole new president. A whole lot of dirt's come out about that president since then, but it doesn't matter. But in 2008, something else happened as well. And it concerns the first steel. The, the, we're talking about Apollyon. Remember, the focus of the book of Revelation is the release of Apollyon. And in order to get him released, there were seven seals that had to be broken just to get him out of the abyss, the gate, the portal. There's two portals at play here. One is the portal to the divine, the Great Pyramid the monument of man, the exodus portal of the chief cornerstone. The other portal is the gate to the abyss. Babylon, call it Babylon. There are two portals in the book of Revelation. In 2008, CERN, the great Hadron Collider, came online. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. But that's the isometric counterpart. Now, you know, for you, those of you doing your own research, you're going to find a lot of other things in 2008 that relate to this 2032 event and 2012 to 2028 and 2016 to 2024 next year and many years in between. And that's why in the center of this chart, I have provided you the isometric years, their counterparts every year from 2020 all the way to 2040 is provided for you. So you can see the isometric and you can see for yourself. All you have to do is go to Google This Day in History 2016 and look up the major events in 2016 and compare them to 2024. It'll blow your mind. It's a very easy exercise. You can go to This Day in History in 2012. Look up all the major events that happened in 2012 on, on, the, on the website, This Day in History. And when you do, compare it to 2028 on this chart. Not only, not only that, but what, but what we're about to go through in the calendrics. I got to hurry because we got some amazing things. I haven't even started the calendrics yet. I'm still on this chart. So the sixth seal. Let's go ahead and read the sixth seal since I'm talking about it. All right. And when he had opened the fifth seal. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be killed. These are martyrs. These are martyrs. This is this is some. This is these are events that do not unfold on earth, but these individuals have already been given their new avatar. This this event happens outside the construct. It's got nothing to do with what's going on in here. It has nothing to do with the four horsemen. The fifth seal are, are events away from the world. It's in the world of the spirit. But the world of the spirit to me is just outside the construct. They were given white robes. That's tangible. That's new clothes. Anybody who studied the Gnosis knows that the mantle in the robe is, is nothing but a symbol for another body. That's, that's what's happened here. They have, they have received their inheritance, but they were also promised to be a part of the execution of judgment. So in these new avatars, they will be returning. But when they do, it's to make war. It's called the Battle of Armageddon. Now, <clears throat> remember guys, those who studied my great, pyramid, my, my, uh, my great Pyramid videos and read my book, my book, Lost Scriptures of Giza, shows you in the ancient world, the Great Pyramid of Giza was called the Altar of God. Oh, the altar of the Almighty. It is no different than the altar of agony, which had 10,800 bricks. Remember, the Great Pyramid was finished after 90 years, which is 1,080 months. It was finished in 2815 BC. 2815 BC was the year 1080 Annus Mundi, the Phoenix Chronology. 
the history of our world. I've gone through this many times in many presentations, but even more so, the Great Pyramid is the subject matter of the Egyptian coffin text, 1080. Yeah, guys, everything has been set out, laid out before us, and it's very simple. That's why it blows people's minds when they actually hear these things. They're actually, it's actually very simple. We live in a spiritually divine mathematical construct. There's no way around it. So the fifth seal, when all this happens, is 2036. So what happened in the fifth seal? Events didn't happen in the construct. There's no physical reality to these events in here. So you're not, and it's also a, it's also a giving out of the white robes and names of the holy. The fifth seal, God is essentially recognizing his own. Here's my body politic. Here's, here are those who, who, who uh, he's collected in the altar. Well, isometrically, 2036 lines perfectly up with the year 2004. In 2004, the deep state also did their own collection of identities. Let me show you. In 2004, Facebook was introduced. Some of you might not think that's important, but something that affects the entire world and enters the realm of human consciousness now, now integrates you with the construct even more powerfully. Facebook is not something you can taste, touch, feel, hear, smell. No, it's intangible. But Facebook is a part of the deep state apparatus to collect the identities and everything about everybody. Not only that, but Gmail, used by almost everybody in the world, Gmail was introduced in 2004. Again, this is a collection of identities. The MyDoom virus caused over $38 billion in electronic infrastructure. The MyDoom. MyDoom sounds very apocalyptic. MyDoom virus. That happened in 2004. But the, but one of the greatest things that Hollywood produced in 2004, the one thing that Hollywood produced that was a spell in the fight against Mordor. Yeah, guys, Hollywood movies are, are rituals. Rituals are spells. It's a good movie, too. It's not just any of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The one that came out in 2004 that got all the awards was Return of the King. And Return of the King is also the subject matter of the Seven Seals. It's not the king you think, though. It's a polyon. So 2036, 2036 is when there's a fundamental change in the architecture of our reality. That's what the fifth seal is. Something, some, there's a disconnect that happens in the, if you're already good, you'll stay good. If you're already wicked and evil, you're going to stay wicked and evil. Something happens to the dynamic fabric of our reality in, in the year 2036, which basically identifies you. That change also allows a polyon to possess an avatar. So this is 2036. It is the return of the king. Oh, and I know some of you decoders, you guys are going, you guys are going to find way more stuff than I have. Way more. So here's, here's the icing on the cake before we go to the calendrics. We're, we're sticking with the four-year patterning of uh, well, the four-year patterning of the tetramorph. And what do we get to after 2036? Archaics veterans, you all know. The month of May 2040 is the return of the phoenix. It's right here. It's, it's perfect. I didn't have to do any manipulations. Didn't have to do anything. It's all right here. Since 2006, I've been publishing about the phoenix occurring in the year 2040. 
three published books, over a hundred articles. You can read many of them on archaics.com for free. They're in the blog, all about the Phoenix. There's a whole Facebook, whole Facebook page with a, with a, about 80 different posts about the Phoenix. It is called uh, Archaics Data on the Phoenix Phenomenon on Facebook. And you can read all about the Phoenix there, May 2040. The sixth seal is on the four-year patterning for 2040. You can't make this stuff up. It's right here. Now, I've already told you what's going to happen in 2040. It is an absolute total infrastructure collapse because of a pole shift. Oceans are going to slip their basins. Nostradamus is very specific about it as well. He even mentions the Phoenix and the year 2040. He even focuses on the month of May. I've got videos and published books about, about those quatrains for anybody to see. Most, most of you have already seen them anyway. So what we have isometrically is, is amazing because the isometric counterpart for 2040 is the year 2000. Remember, the isometric counterparts deal with the patterning, what was in the human imagination, and rituals that happened in the past that later received their fulfillments holographically. In the year, in the year 2000, the deep state had everybody worrying that the whole infrastructure electronic grid was going to go down. Not just computers, but the whole grid was going to go down because everything was attached to to clocks on computers, and they said that the computers wouldn't the computers wouldn't acknowledge the year two thousand. They all said this, and it was all BS. It was all it was all hogwash from the beginning. But millions of people bought software, new computers. Millions of people became preppers. Millions of people changed the dynamic of their life temporarily to account for this major systemic collapse that was expected, Y2K. It was a ritual, but it will become a fact in 2040. It's crazy, guys. So I told you guys, this is, we're, we're an hour and 18 minutes in and I'm not done. Oh, I'm about to get into the amazing stuff now. But before I do, we just did the, we just did the, uh, the seal. Okay. For those who don't know, I'm going to read the sixth seal. Many of you have, don't know. This is the Phoenix phenomenon. It's happened multiple times in the past. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. That's a very telling statement. Remember, Charles Ford said, when stars fall, there's star jelly all over the ground. It's not meteorites. There's no rocks. Yeah, there's been so many hundreds of examples of this, of people going to the site where they saw a falling star and they found this jelly. They call it star jelly all over the ground. William Corliss, the scientist, also documents this. I did a whole video about it. Uh, you guys remember. So, yeah, cause what, what are untimely figs? They're going to be gooey all over the ground. Yeah, man, Revelation is telling you some real stuff, guys. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. That's a pole shift. Guys, it doesn't matter if the world is stationary. A pole shift is replicated by the motion of the stellosphere. When the sky all of a sudden starts tripping and moving, and then just goes this way, and all the stars follow it, and the sun and the moon follow it, it doesn't matter if the earth is stationary. All the movement is in the sky. Pole shift, excuse me, pole shifts are replicated. Remember, I believe the sky is holographic. I don't believe that shit's up there at all. See no evidence for it. All right, now. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? All right, guys. So. 
We are told that in the last days, men will seek death and death will flee from them. What happened? In, what really happened in the fifth seal? What happened that those who were redeemed, those who were chosen, those who are awakened, those who overcometh are already getting their, their, their inheritances and their avatars in death while there's still many who haven't died. And yet what happens that now men aren't praying to die because evidently they can't they want to hide so we need to uh we the the sixth seal is very is is very telling because i honestly believe that by the time of the sixth seal almost the whole world will now be awake as to what's going on but it's too late they were given four horsemen to wake up. The first four seals were designed to wake you up. The fifth seal stopped that process. To him who be wicked, let him be wicked still. Now, so, and after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth and the wind uh, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. Guys, I told you what's going to happen with the, fist, with, with, with the return of the phoenix. With the return of the phoenix, there will be a return of the vapor canopy. It is the vapor canopy that fulfills the rest of Revelation. The things that happen in the seven trumpets, in the thunders, the, the bowls of wrath, these are things that are under vapor canopy conditions that are agitated by other geograph, other other just anomalies that are mentioned in revelation but this is the return of the vapor canopy vapor canopy can't exist with high winds it's gonna the, the 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 cessation of wind with volcanic activity will fill the lower mesosphere with ash and pumice while phoenix like it always does will blanket the upper mesosphere with red particulates Depending upon the relative humidity of a certain area, sometimes it's red mud, sometimes it's red rain, sometimes it's red dust or red sand. And yeah, you know, you guys, I don't, I can't go into those details. I got eighty-four videos on Phoenix. Um, let's see. So I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Two things are, remember, two portals, two portals, two types of, two types of spirits. Now we have two types of seals. This is the seven seals. And during the seven seals, those who belong to Apollyon will receive their mark. It's called the mark of the beast. Those who belong to those who have the spirit of the living God, those who are in a relationship with the oversoul, they will receive the seal of the living God. While they're still in their flesh, their avatar will be changed. Now, this is it right here. Now, what's, 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 is it hurt not? Now, this process goes on. Probably for four years. I didn't go beyond the, the seal, but probably for four years to the seventh seal. This process will go on around all over the world. Each team is now being marked. That mark has something to do with a fundamental change in, in the human body. The redeemed are going to be okay. There's a change in their body that will allow them to be immune to what the followers of Apollyon are going to suffer. That suffering starts four years later in the beginning of the trumpet judgments. The seals are broken. It's done. To him, to he that is wicked, let him be wicked still. So, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Oh, let me, let me move on. My fat fingers, guys. 
And another angel stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. The throne is the tetramorph. And the smoke of incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Okay. And the smoke of the incense, which came, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God. This means that those immortal souls who have exited the construct and received a, a, an immortal body, an immortal avatar, they've got their new avatar. They are praying to the oversoul, not for themselves, but for those who are still left in the construct. This is what this verse is revealing. They have made it out of the construct and they are with the oversoul, looking back in on events, and they are empowering their spiritual brothers and sisters inside the construct. So we have to understand that the seven seals are not the tribulation period. This is a period that is designed to wake you up. This is it. Now, seals in ancient times were only used to deliver very important messages, and, they were, and the messages were only to be received at certain times. So this is what the seals are. This is what it is. Now, the colors, we have to address the colors, guys. Apollyon was white. The next one was a fiery yellow. It was a fiery yellow, guys, yellow-orange. Then the next one was uh, black. And then the next one, the next color was a, not a deep green, but just a green. Not, not a real light, light pale green, but a, but a green. Maybe lime green, I don't know. These four colors, guys, are associated to the events they depict. I can't. Ignore the fact that those four colors are the four primary colors. At least two, three, or all four colors are found in almost every Muslim flag in the world. I can't miss that. And I can't I can't miss the fact that red, white, and blue seems to be all, all the colors that are in almost all the Christian Western nations' flags. Some are white with a with, with a symbol in blue. Some are some are some flags are 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 are, are red and blue, some are red and white, some are blue and red. But these three main colors seem to be Western world Christ Christian colors. And then these four colors here are they're 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 pan Arab colors. This is what this is this is a this isn't this isn't to be taken lightly because of the events that they're connected to isometrically and in the calendrics, which is different. So if you if you were to look at the years, and any of you can do this, in the middle you can see on this chart right here, if you were to look at the years 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015, which parallel, check this out, they parallel the second and third horsemen at 2025, 2026, 2027, and 2028. If you were to look at these in the center, these years, I Googled it. In these years, I found all kinds of references to uh, basically Muslim bombings, bombings going on all over the world, the infrastructure being attacked, all kinds of bombings and stuff. And, and what is ever, and what is done, what is done lightly in the past has a fuller fulfillment in the future isometrically. This is how these palindromes work. I found that very interesting, but we're going to let the calendric speak for itself because this is where, this is where the gems are. Not just the calendrics, well, we're going to let Mikhail del Nostradam's the centuries, the individual quatrains using the date index published by Mario Reading, which actually shows Phoenix in 2040 in the month of May. We're, we're going to use those quatrains, and I'm going to show you what Nostradamus said about these same years. All right, we're making a good time, hour and a half. All right. The calendrics do tell a story. We're going to start with 20, 2024, the second seal. 
This is when peace is taken from the earth and thousands of little fires are everywhere and the ultimate weapon being used is a knife or a dagger. All right, guys, this is what, this is what, 20, the calendrics for 2024, this is exactly 1380 years, 138 times 10. Some of y'all new to my channel, this is all, this is, you're going to miss all this. This is for our case veterans. You guys understand calendrics. This is the Phoenix number, 138 times 10. 1,380 years since the year 644 AD when the Muslims built the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem and basically pissed off the entire European world. That's 2024. And 2024, let's see, that's 20, yeah, that's 2024. So we can expect we can expect in 2024 something going down with the Dome of the Rock. It might not be. I, I I personally think the Israelis are going to make the first move because they're they're they want they want all this to unfold. But uh, remember, guys, Massilia. Some of y'all know his name, Massilini or Massini. Massala. I can't I can't pronounce the guy. He is the origin of the acronym Mafia. Mafia is five different words for burning, stealing, stealing, lying. It's a, this is, Mafia was an acronym. This guy and Albert Pike communicated to each other. In that communication, all three world wars were laid out for everybody. I've talked about this on my channel before. All three world wars were laid out. The first world war was to subdue and enslave Russia. That was the first war, and it, and it unfolded just like that. The Romanov Christian Christian Empire of Russia became the USSR, controlled by the Jewish Bolsheviks. This unfolded exactly like Masali said it was going to unfold. He also wrote that World War II would be to subdue and punish Germany and create a world ruling council. And that's exactly what happened because as soon as the Nuremberg trials were over, they enacted the United Nations or the League of Nations and then the United Nations. So both world wars were, were not predicted. They were basically mapped out. And so was the third one. For those of you who don't know, Massili also wrote to Albert Pike and said that the third world war will be an all out world war three between Christianity and Islam. You just can't make this stuff up. All right. <clears throat> now, the year 2025 is equally 1,380 years. This is 10 Phoenix periodicities, 138 times 10, from the year 645 AD when the Christians attack Egypt and several Arabi uh, Arabic cities. It's going back and forth. 2025 is also 2000 and 2025 is also the 2080th year, 800th year, which is 700 times four of the Greek Olympiad calendar. You're going to see a lot about calendrical systems. Remember, remember guys, calendars contain us over and over and over. I tell you the whole Phoenix system is a calendar. The tetramorph is all, is all calendar. In 2026 is exactly 360 years, calendar round, 60 times 6, 360, like, just like a perfect cycle, which comes from the word circle, 360 degrees. Now, 360 years before 2026 is the year 1666 AD, the Great Fire of London, predicted by Nostradamus. What could this mean for us here? Well, right here in 2026... We have all we have all kinds of violence going on. We already know that the UK is a captured operation. We already know there's a whole lot of fifth columnists in the UK right now just waiting on the bat signal. 2026 is 15 centuries or 30 jubilees. At 30 jubilees after the foundation of the modern calendar that we're on right now. Anno Domini calendar does not go to the birth of Christ. It was invented by Dionysius in 526 AD. And then it was, then it was retro. It, it was, it was basically implemented in retrospect over 500 years after 
the event that allegedly started the calendar. It was invented in 526. This was exactly uh, 30 Jubilees to 2026. So the Anno Domini calendar, again, again, another calendrical association showing that at this time in 2026, big events are happening. 2026 is 2070 years. Again, 138 times 15. It is 2070 years from the start of the Roman Julian calendar in 45 BC, invented by Sausages. Again, calendars contain us. We are, we are getting to these significant years in these major ancient calendars all unfolding during the seven seals. 2027 is 1,380 years, 138 times 10 after 647 AD, when a Muslim Arab army conquers Christian Carthage. Carthage is northern Africa. 2027 is 840 years. This is the foundation number, 120 times 7. This, this is 120 times 7, 840 years from 1187 AD when the Muslims invaded and took Jerusalem. They captured 30,000 Christians. 2027 is also 240 years after 1787. The U.S. federal government established the first Congress. Major events in 2027 will be unfolding in the United States. There's going, there's going to be some fighting in the streets here. I don't believe, I believe a lot of the United States is going to be immune to this because, listen, even fifth columnists know that there's certain states you better not mess with. And they, they're not even trying to get come here. They're going to focus on East, East Coast and West Coast. So, uh, for the year 2027, Nostradamus Centuries Quatrain 527, according to Mario Reading, Reading's Date Index, reads, for the year 2027, with fire and weapons not far from the Black Sea, he will come from Persia to occupy Trezabond. Pharos and Mytilene tremble. The sun is bright. The Adriatic Sea is covered with Arab blood. This is Nostradamus for the year 2027. 2028 is 54 centuries, 5,400 years, which is 1080 times 5, or 108 times 50. From the year 3373 BC, this was the start of the ancient American Olmec calendar. This signifies something major happening in the Americas. 2028 is 1,552 years. That's, that's a millennium, 1,000 plus a Phoenix cycle, 552 years after the 476 AD fall of Rome to the Germans. I believe his name is Adovacar. 2028 is also 1,296 years, which is a golden proportion number. It is 144 times the number of judgment, nine. That's 1296 years after the year 732 AD when Muslims invaded France and they were defeated by Charles Martel. They called him the hammer. He stopped, he stopped the Islamic incursion into France. 2028 is 252 years, which is 36 times 7, after the U.S. declares independence in 1776. 2028 is 240 years after 1788 when George Washington was elected as the first president of the United States. 2028 is 216 years, which is 108 plus 108. After 1812, Britain invades the U.S. and burns down the White House. All of Europe is at war. Napoleon loses hundreds of thousands of soldiers trying to attack Moscow. And in 1812, a series of earthquakes destroyed much of the United States. 2028 is 6,066 years from the capture flood in 4039 BC. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the capture of Luna when the moon appeared in our sky in the year 4038. I've got several videos about it. The capture of Luna was in 4039 BC. This year of 2028 is exactly 6,066 years since the moon appeared. 
Why is the moon relevant to the seven seals? Because the moon represents one of the major players in the seven seals, Islam, just like the sun represents one of the major players in the seven seals, which is the Western Christian world, which is why the phoenix is from the benefactor and the phoenix absolutely darkens the sun and darkens the moon in the sixth seal to show that both sides are wrong. Now, let's go with uh, 2028. Nostradamus, Centuries, Quatrain, 428, in uh, date index of Mario reading, 2028. When Venus is covered by the sun, shapes will be concealed beneath the splendor. Mercury, with its fire, will expose them. They will be misused in war. All right. I don't know what that means. I've read some commentaries, uh, Nostradamus commentaries, saying that there's going to be a major astronomical discovery in 2028. There's going to be bodies floating in the sky. But according to Nostradamus, these, these things that are going to be seen are going to be used as weapons. So it sounds to me like there's going to be some halo, halo drones or halo balloons hidden in the sky that are about to attack a certain area. But an eclipse reveals to the people who are about to get attacked that all these things are hidden in the sky. They wouldn't be seen while the sun is shining. But once the sun gets eclipsed, they're going to see all these weapons way high in the sky. So I don't know. It's all it's all it's all subjective. But I do know that this very well could be astronomical. Venus and Mercury are mentioned. Some of you astrologers out there, you may be able to understand this is the year 2028. 2029. 2029 is 576 years, 144 times 4 is a golden proportion number. After the year 1453 AD, the fall of Constantinople, the capital of the West to Islam. It's also the year that Gutenberg printed the very first Bible. Now, 2029 is 500 years, that's 10 jubilees, after 1529 AD. Muslim invasion of Europe is totally checked at Vienna. 2029 is 3,036 months, which is divisible by 138, from the 1776 independence of the United States of America. So moving over to 2031. In the year 2031, remember, guys, all these are relative to the, to the events of this. The calendrics all attach. These historical events I'm reading to you are all attached calendrically to the period of the seven seals. This is what's going on during all the seals. 2031, 552 years of Phoenix cycle, which is 138 times 4. After the year 1479 A.D., Muslims invaded Naples, capturing 22,000 Christians and torturing 12,000 Christians before the walls of another city they were trying to take. 2031 is 476 years after Nostradamus prophesied. Uh, his prophecies were published in the year 15. 55 AD. For, uh, 404, uh, for those who have seen my older videos, you see 476 year period is everywhere. The fall of Rome was 476 years. The fall of the, the uh, Troy fell in the 476 year of the Hittite Empire. Uh, 476 is found all throughout history with, with the fall of kingdoms and empires. And here we have a 476 year countdown right here to the year 2031 from the date that Nostradamus published his prophecies. In the year 2032 is 13 centuries from the year 732 when Muslims invaded France, but they're defeated. 2032 is also 540 years, which is 108 times 5. From the year 1492 A.D., Europeans defeat Muslims in Spain. All Jews are deported from Spain. Listen, guys, Archaics TV, I'm going into this. Uh, I can't really talk going into it in here, 
but the year 1492 has been you've been told in all your all your history books and all that it's the great year that Columbus discovered America and all that yeah there was something else going on Columbus was Jewish his name is Christabel Cologne and he he was forced to leave the port in 1492 he went to Cuba, but he was forced to, to leave to leave with 800,000 other Jews that were kicked out of Spain on penalty of death. So a lot was going on in 1492, guys. We'll talk about that in Archaics TV. And what's crazy is the main guy who was doing all the torturing in the Inquisition for the Spanish, who tortured his own people, was Jewish. His name is Torquemada. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's 2032. 2032. Okay, 2032. Nostradamus Centuries Quatrain 1032. The date index of Mario reading for 2032 reads, The Great Empire will continue year on year. One man will snatch it from the others, but his life and his reign will be brief. He will only carry the load for two years. I've read several commentaries. I've got 13 different translations translations of Nostradamus from Mario Reading, Eric Achieve I got a bunch of them. And it's it's across the board. They think this is an American president because Nostradamus talks about the great empire as if it's something that's that's not a part of Europe and the rest of the world, that Nostradamus was very, very clear that he understood that in the future there was going to be an empire far across the sea. This is way before the United States. So it's a uh, uh, lot, all the commentaries basically agree that this is a president who only serves half a term. And he's killed. That's 2032. 2033 is 792 years, the Nemesis X period. From 1241 AD, Europe is invaded by the Tartars. The, these are the cons. 2033 is also 504 years, which is 252 times 2. 504 years from 1529, the Muslim invasion into Europe that is checked at Vienne. 2033 is also mentioned by Nostradamus. Centuries, quatrains, 733. Date index for 2033 reads, 2033, trickery will reign. The army will be stripped. An obsession with class. Spying given free reign. False friends will unite. Hatred once questioned, will be reawakened. Okay, guys, Mario Reading translated this, and he thinks he thinks that Nostradamus being Jewish was talking about a reawakening uh, 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 against Jews, a hatred of the Jews, and all this stuff. I don't. I'm not following that at all. At all. I'm not following at this at all. The whole subject matter of these seals and all that is Christianity and Islam. And uh, the deep state is funded and are largely controlled or a major participant is, 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 are these Bolsheviks. But uh, trickery will reign. The army will be stripped. An obsession with class, spying given free reign. False friends will unite. Hatred, once questioned, will be, will be reawakened. We're going to go into a little bit more detail into that further. There's another quatrain that gives us more, I believe. But uh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe that's in my other notes. But what I'm seeing here, <clears throat> there, what is attempted in the Western nations, what is attempted in the United States and other Western nations, fails. This whole Islamic push all these fifth columnists, they do their damage. They do all that shit, but they get controlled. They get killed off. And it's going to start nationalist movements everywhere. And now, because the, in, because the popul Western populations are now, at this point, fed up with internationalism, with globalism, with foreigners and migrants, they literally, they literally, thank you. They literally embark on purges. Listen, guys, an obsession with class. 
Germans are going to be identifying who really is German and who's not. Americans will, will be identifying who really is American and who's not. Now it's going to get, I've told you guys, I've told you guys, I've warned you in many of my videos, the Christian Reich is coming. And when they do, there's going there when they gain power, they are going to basically reinterpret the Constitution, return to a lot of core original colonial values, which automatically means that a lot of people will no longer be viewed as citizens. So this is what I'm seeing. It says an obsession with class spying given free reign guys the jews have been kicked out over a hundred times from different countries throughout european history it's easy to find there's so many books about it the seven seals is identifying something else major players the three major players of the seven seals are the three abrahamic religions that's what's unfolding here guys we have to stick to that context yeah it's a Spying given free reign. Yeah, guys. You may I may as well just say it. Noahide laws. False friends unite. Of course you will. You're gonna be real friendly with people who can point the finger at you and have you tortured and sent to a NFL, an NFL Coliseum that's no longer playing sports and games. Now it's all blood sports. Now you've been sentenced to death, so they're gonna throw you in an arena. Remember, the beasts of the earth are gonna be eating people at this time. So, all right, that's Nostradamus. He nailed 2032. So 2034 is 14 centuries, 700 plus 700 from the year 634 AD. The Arabs defeat Christian army at Battle of Yarmouk. <clears throat> now, 2034 AD, Nostradamus, centuries, quatrain, 334, Mario reading, date index, 2034 AD. At the total eclipse of the sun, the monster will be seen in broad daylight. He will be misinterpreted. None will have foreseen the cost. Okay. Monster is misinterpreted is interesting. It means that this individual that everybody has invested their faith in they're going to see evidence now that they effed up. He's not what they thought that he was. Yeah. And it will cost the people dearly. Yeah, guys. In 2034, the world will get the first piece of evidence that the person they think is the savior, the person they think is the hero, they're going to get the first real glimpse that he's actually a polyon. Remember the first seal, pop, Apollo, Pharmacaea. All right, 2036 is 792 years, which is the Nemesis X period again, from 1244 AD. Muslims capture Jerusalem. Vatican exterminates the Cathars of France. It's terrible. 2036, Nostradamus, Centuries, Quatrain, 936, Mario Reading Date Index for nine for, for 2036 reads, a great king falls into the hands of a youngster. There is confusion around Easter time and a knife blow, long-term captives and St. Elmo's fire when three brothers would try and kill each other. This, this, this Quatrain, bears a lot it need there's a lot of uh there's a lot to unpack here and i'm hoping some of you astrologers could help with that i've seen some commentaries i might go into my, my mario reading commentary later and see it i'm not going to try and decode all that but it is interesting at the total eclipse of the sun the monster will be seen in broad daylight the monster is apollyon who is viewed as a hero up until this point he will be misinterpreted. None will have foreseen the cost. That was earlier. Now, uh, yeah, none will have foreseen the cost. So, and it's going to cost them dearly is what it is. It's just so crazy. So we have another one, though, for, tw for 2034. 
I jumped to 2036. No, I didn't. So I'm still in 2034. Oh, wow, guys. I'm sorry. I jumped to 2036. I need to go back to 2034. There's another quatrain here. There's another quatrain for 2034. Uh, Mario Reading's date index for 2034 says, the people of Rhodes will demand help. Abandoned by the neglect of their heirs, the Arab empire will access its course, its cause revived against the West. Wow. This continues quatrain five, uh, 534 because this is quatrain 568. 68 is 34 plus 34. I showed you guys in my published book, Nostradamus and the Plants of Apocalypse, that Nostradamus coded many of his quatrains that way. He wanted you to skip around to go to the next ones. And we know this by the syntax and by the symbols that are contained in the quatrains. There's a thread, but you can't read them in order. That's how, that's, how, that's how he concealed all this information. It's beautiful. The great camel will come to drink of the Danube, and the Rhine will not repent of it. Those of the Rhone tremble, and even more so in lore. Near the Alps, the cock will ruin him. Mario Reading says that uh, this is a reference to an Arab invasion of Europe in the year 2034. It's going to go through Germany with success. But once it turns toward the Alps, somebody who's going to be known as the cock or the chicken or the rooster is going to defeat the whole uh, Arab army. In France, we've already seen in the calendrics, France plays in a lot here. But, but wouldn't it? It's very close. It's surrounded and it has a, has a real uh, high Muslim population. So now we get to 2036, golden proportion number 1,440, 144 times 10, from the year 596 AD, when the Vatican gains entry into Britain, beginning its spread of Catholicism. 2036, okay, I already showed you 792 years, the extermination of the Cathars in France, which were the true Christians. Um, and the Muslims captured Jerusalem in 1244 AD. And I already, I already read to you the 2036 quatrain, the great, the great king falls into the hands of a youngster. Say, uh, the one, there is confusion around Easter time and a knife blow. Uh, remember, the Antichrist is wounded. There's a period where he's wounded, but he, but he, he still lives. Long-term captives and St. Elmo's fire when three brothers would try and kill each other. I'm not really sure about that one. But long-term captives is interesting because at the exact same time, we have the fifth seal. Fifth seal is a whole bunch of souls that are quarantined in an altar that are freed and given their white robes. Long-term captives. Now, Nostradamus is interesting. 2037 AD, 1,400 years, 700 plus 700 since 637 AD when the Arab armies invaded Persia. That's Iran. They also invaded Syria and they took Damascus and other cities. This is 2037. 2037 AD, Nostradamus, Centuries Quatrain 527, Mario Reading's date index for 2027 reads, shortly before the eclipse of the sun, a war is triggered by a great nation of unbelievers. All right. 2038 A.D. is 2,760 years. That's 552 times 5. It's 5 Phoenix cycles. It's divisible by 138. 138 times 20. From the year 723 B.C., when the Assyrians, Babylon, invaded and occupied Palestine. 2038 AD is 21 centuries, 700 times 3, from 63 BC, when the Roman general Pompey took and occupied Jerusalem. Twenty thirty eight. 2038 AD is 1,188 years, 108 times 11, from 846. AD, the Muslim army attacks Rome. 2038 is 14 centuries, 700 plus 700. From 638 AD, the Arab Caliph Omar took Jerusalem. 2040, we're at the end now. 2040, Phoenix darkens the sun, the emblem of Christianity, 
and wounds the moon, the emblem of Islam. Now, the year 2040 is 2815 of the Greek Olympiad calendar. 2815 BC was when the Great Pyramid was completed in the year 1080 Annus Mundi. Can't make this stuff up. And anybody can look at the calendrics. There's so much data on that. So it's overwhelming, guys. 2040 is also the year 1776 of the Egyptian Coptic Christian calendar. That entire data set that I just read of the Nostradamus quatrains, the actual seals and the notes on the seals, and then all the calendrics, every bit of that is, is it will be a PDF. It's, it, it's already a PDF, and this will be attached to it. This PDF here will be attached to it right here for free. You might have to give me 10 minutes, 15 minutes to upload it all to Podia, but I will upload it to this deal. But this is this is this is designed for you to look at, for you to do your own research. It's real easy to understand when you see the chart. It's designed for you to read to read the book of Revelation and then the other prophetic passages throughout the Bible, um, to read the quatrains of Nostradamus. And really, just use a calculator and go forward and backward in time and look at the events and how, and how they mirror each other. I promise you, I have not scratched the surface. This is the calendrical template. But you guys can fill in all the details. I know Square Peg's going to get on it immediately. But, uh, yeah, it's amazing. There's a bunch. I got an, I got a tablet. Oh, I got so much. To, here it is right there. I got a tablet where I already started doing it. I, I already started. I, I, I was finding all kinds of things. I was finding so many parallels with Air France 447, the explosion that killed the miners, uh, Boston Marathon bomb bombing, the the, ex, the detonation of Deepwater Horizon, the invasion of Syria, Bing, uh, here's Benghazi, the Bin Laden incidents, the gas attacks against Syria, Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 disappearance, a worldwide spike in Islamic terrorism and violence. Listen, guys, I got a whole list right here. It just keeps going down. All this, all these things that are isometrically connected to these seals. There's a bunch of them, guys. All kinds of things going on. So yeah, it's uh, I haven't been able to keep up with the chat. I, I appreciate it. I'm gonna go deep. I'm gonna go deeper on this, but you got the seals. The seals are done. We can always add details to them, but I'm a chronologist, guys. And chronology is what what I wrote now. You know, it's like Frederick Nietzsche says, when a matter becomes clear, it ceases to concern us. Now that I have this, man, it's ready to, I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to move on in the seven trumpets. I want to go ahead and outline the seven trumpets because we already know. We already know that the second and third trumpet is the nemesis X object, Wormwood. We already know that. Well, we go, it's, you know, it comes back in 2046, which is the true end of the Mayan long count. 2046 is it. We, I've already got so much data showing all the isometric parallels that link 2046 to all these disasters in world history. Yeah. And the 792 year periodicity of the Nemesis X object goes back thousands of years and ends in 2046. So it's, it's beautiful. So, yeah, I'm ready to move. I'm ready to move forward with that. Get back into my book, of Revelation, and see what I find on these seven trumpets, because the seven trumpets are something I really, really, really looked into a whole lot, because it's just uh, the seven seals are where it's all at. Seven seals is the awakening. The seven seals is, guys, you, you can live through, you can live through the seven seals and, and live a totally, absolutely normal life. Wake you up. These are events going the construct they may not involve you other than an awareness you hear about it but i'm telling you there will be no guessing as to each seal each seal is going to be like the first seal in january of 2020 you knew everything changed you knew everything changed in a, in a deep spiritual level you knew nothing would ever be the same again and that's held out to be true the world it was, a, it was the it was the one of the largest pattern breaks in world history 2020 yeah guys it was a wake up but it wasn't a bad wake up yeah there were some bad events there's bad events that happen in every neighborhood of every municipality every city every country every continent in the world bad events are always happening this is a negative default programming construct negative events are everywhere but this was a, a signal event that everybody can agree something changed that was 2020. 
That was the first horseman, Apollo. If you haven't seen that video and don't, don't know what I'm talking about, you would do well to go listen to it. I can't believe I, I kept this presentation in two hours. That blows my mind. It's a great Friday night. But great Friday night. Let's see how many, see what y'all doing in here. You can hit that like button too. That wouldn't hurt my feelings. That would not hurt my feelings. Yeah, man. That's an awesome chart. I wonder square pegs in here. Square peg, make yourself known. Perceiver, look out, Joel. I just made you a moderator. I've been making moderators today. I just made you a moderator. We've done too many videos together. For those of you who don't know Joel of Perceiver, I only have one video that's got over 100,000 views, and it's called Toltec to High Tech. Who really are the elite? And that was my video with Joel. I think it's got like 110,000 uh, views now. I don't know. So I have another profound video on Calendrix. I told you guys about it already. I just never got around to it because the Job video led to the first seal. Now it led to the other seven seals. I haven't had, but it's already done. It's, the video's not done, but the research is. It's profound. I told you guys I'm going to show you how we know the Phoenix phenomenon. The sixth seal is going to happen in May of 2040, and we're going to use historical events to do it. We are going to use the method of Firmicus Maternus. Yeah, that video is going to be awesome, too. I'm excited about that one. Yeah, man. Yeah, I love you guys, but there's really no reason. There's no time for a QA and a or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and check out after I say love you guys in the chat. I know it's about time. I think I want to eat something totally unhealthy today. I think I'm going to give me a hamburger and french fries. I'm, I'm feeding for something unhealthy. Yeah, man. Appreciate all the support, guys. Yeah, man. I'm eager. I'm eager to PDF this chart and attach it to the other PDF and upload it to Podia. You know what? Y'all might y'all might need to give me 15 or 20 minutes. I will I will do a post on YouTube with the link so you don't have to come back to this video. I'll just do it. So you just go to the community post and you can get, and you can grab that. Uh, now I know Shiva Shampoo and I, we have a, we have a video we're going to be doing pretty soon. Uh, we're going to go deep on Mandela effect. Just laugh and chop it up. Shiva has been with our case for a long time. I've been wanting to do this for a while. We just had a scheduling conflict. We're on opposite hemispheres. So uh, he and I are going to do that pretty soon. But other than that, guys, I'm checking out. Love you. And I'm hungry.